My name is Robert Larigo. Uh, I am a gastroenterologist. I uh, just graduated uh, fellowship from Stanford, uh, and I have a, a special interest in inflammatory bowel disease. Hello, Rob. It's nice to meet Hi. you. My name is Jenna Ziegler, and I am coming up on my five-year anniversary of being diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Um, I also am the blogger behind the comical colon, where I kind of blog about my journey and try to encourage others to share their journeys. So my question is about tonsil stones. And I was wondering if that is something that you commonly see in patients. And if you do, I'm wondering if they're more related to symptoms of IBD or if they're more correlated with um, IBD medications. Yeah, that's a really good question, Jenna. Um, I, as part of the type of research that I do on the side, that's kind of related to patient advocacy. Is is um, I do research on what people with IBD are talking about online, um, and um, how their discussions can inform providers um, and give us early warnings on things like side effects of medications and really direct our patient visits. Um, and I, I don't, personally, I don't know of any relationship between IBD and these tonsillar stones or, or Cialoliths uh, is what we call them. Um, I have uh, seen blog posts, of people talking about uh, them being on steroids and kind of asking the community as to whether steroids can cause tonsillar stones. I don't tend to typically think of them being associated. I had to read up a little bit on tonsillar stone since it's a little bit out of my realm. Um, but from what I understand is, is conditions that lead to decreased flow of the saliva and increased calcium in, in the saliva can increase your risk of developing stones. And the risk factors that I can identify are um, um, low volume, so hypovolemia. So if you're really dehydrated, if you've lost a lot of blood, for example, um, from your IBD, and you're just not keeping up nutritionally, that can certainly be a contributing factor. Um, medicines can certainly increase your risk. And not steroids necessarily, but things like uh, diuretics or water pills. Uh, people sometimes take for you know, blood pressure or, or heart disease. Um, there are certain medicines um, that have uh, anticholinergic qualities, uh, medicines that cause dry mouth, um, uh, for example, uh, that, can, uh, that can cause uh, tonsillar stones, uh, trauma to your tonsils or your salivary glands, uh, gout, smoking, uh, chronic dental disease, uh, and apparently a history of kidney stones as well. Uh, so those are all kind of the major risk factors that I tend to think of, um, not necessarily uh, I haven't heard of IBD itself uh, being a risk factor for tonsil stones, but I could be mistaken. I have a follow-up question. That, first of all, I want to say that was interesting because I've never really thought about the correlation between tonsil stones and dry mouth, so that's yeah. really interesting. But my follow-up question is about, might they have any relationship with the immune system? Because I know the tonsils play a part in the immune system and medications like prednisone suppress the immune systems. I'm just wondering if there's yeah. any correlation in that regard. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if there is, to be honest. Um, I would think that if, if I, I know the gallbladder a lot better than I know the uh, salivary glands, uh, the tonsils, uh, but if it's anything like gallstones, um, it's the really the issue is, is uh, about um, hyperconcentration uh, and having a small nidus that can develop into a stone and, and flow. Um, so it makes sense to me that, that if, you're, if your saliva isn't, uh, if you're not producing as much saliva as you should, uh, and it's kind of staying in the glands a little bit longer, that, that uh, you have a higher risk of developing those, those uh, salivary stones, uh, or if there are increased uh, calcium because of some medical condition or medication that you're on. Um, but you know, as 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 more people are on um, uh, different types of uh, IBD medications, uh, and we kind of know more about their side effects, um, that may change. Prednisone is a really common drug. It's prescribed for a lot of different types of conditions. So I feel like if it was really associated with prednisone, I probably it would probably would be really well known by now. Um, and I just don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, I've never heard of that. 